Okay, Dick. Dick Bergman, NASCAR on Fox. Okay, Kevin, so who are you going to talk to on Sunday, and how do you put these deals together before you get to the racetrack? Um, I don't know that you put them together before you get to the racetrack. Uh, sometimes I think you can overthink it. I think you just – really, it's all situational. And, you know, it's kind of like I was talking to, to Newton about the first part of the race. You know, it's, it's – um, a lot of it is just uh, sense and feel – as to where, who you're around and what you're around. And, and a lot of times you just you, you take your time and, and you find that car and those, those people that you want to be around, and, and then you, you take those groups of cars and, and you do what you have to do to get back to the front. But if, there, if there's a situation where I don't feel comfortable, I just get out um, and, and get around people that I, that I want to feel comfortable, even if, if it's, it, it requires going to the back or whatever it does. Um, at some point you can mix yourself into people uh, that you feel comfortable around, so you just have to you have to take your teammates first, and then you have the guys you feel comfortable with, and then you just take what's left from there. Bob, uh, Bob Parker, Sing Daily. I'm behind the cameras. So you don't need to see me. What um, on the? Do you already know? And do most drivers know where they'll make the move on the final lap, or how much of it is, depends on your car and and the car in front of you, view and how they're running at the time. I, I think um, most people have a plan in their mind as to how they want it to play out. And I think last year for us it played out for one of the very few times as you would lay as we laid it out on paper and, and talked about it before the race, and it played out all the way to the checkered flag. But very rarely does that happen. So for um, you know for for a lot of us, you just you, it depends on who you're around, how many cars you're around, what position you're in. You know, are you leading? Are you pushing? Uh, is there cars on the outside of you? Is there one group or two groups? Or are you catching the guys in front of you and where you're going to go? There's just so many things running through your mind as to as to what you want to do and where you want to go and where you want to be. But you know, for me, I, I try to stay a couple steps ahead of it and have a plan before I get to to where I'm going as to what I want to do. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Woody. What he came with MRN, Kevin. Are you going to run at Nashville? No. No. Who? Are, what's the KHI plan there? Um, Nashville is uh, Austin Dillon in the in the Nationwide car, and then we'll have uh, four trucks. We'll have uh, Elliott Sadler in a 21. We'll have Kale Gale in a two. Hornaday in a 33, and Nelson Piquet in the eight. Shannon. Hey, Kevin, I'm back here. Um, we've talked a couple of different things, obviously, two-car draft here at Talladega, the communication over the radio between the drivers, um, and, and visibility. How does racing here at Talladega compare to what you guys have done pretty much your entire careers at this racetrack? Well, this has always been a little bit different um, than, than Daytona with the, way that the, with the way that the asphalt was before because there was so much handling at Daytona, you couldn't do the things here or there that you do here. Um, but this has always been a much different race in Daytona. Uh, now it's very similar because of the because of the asphalt, so the styles are are virtually the same. Uh, well, they are the same. So, you know, it's just the way that it is now. Uh, you're just 100% committed to. If you're the second car, you're 100% committed to the guy in front of you. If he piles into something, you're just going to pile in with him. So, uh, it just takes a lot of uh, commitment at this place to to take the chances and do the things that you need to do to to. Uh, to um, to stay up front, and sometimes it pays off, and sometimes you wind up on the hook, but that's just part of it. I have one more question, Kevin. Uh, yesterday, Gore, uh, Jeff Gordon tweeted that uh, this is blind two-car drafting at 200 miles per hour. Can you talk about the visibility problems that you have when you're pushing someone? I don't know that it's a problem. Uh, I think it's just, um, you know, it's it's no different than, than what it used to be when the cars were bumper to bumper, and, and you couldn't, couldn't really... Um, you didn't really have anywhere to go when it used to be three and four wide and, and the whole pack was, was together like that. So it's just, a, it's just a different deal. I mean, it's really not that big a deal, I don't think. Um, you know, you can you just get up there and push and, and you rely on your spotters and, and um, you know, you kind of have a, you kind of have that feel as a driver as to what you're around and, and when things are starting to happen and you can feel a lot from uh, the guy's reaction in front of you as to, as to when he hits the brakes and when he lets off the gas and, and so there's a, this, this is a lot of feel. It's really, um, you spend more time looking backwards than you do forward anyway. So I don't, it's just not that big a deal. Okay, we've got time for a quick, few more quick questions. Chuck, then we'll go to uh, Pat, and then we'll go to Claire. 
Uh, Chuck Howard, NASCAR Media Group. Kevin, uh, from day one when you came into NASCAR, uh, four or five wins, I think, in the Nationwide Series at Richmond, a Cup Series win. And if you're not in the top ten at Richmond, it seems like it's a rarity. Can you pinpoint why from day one that track has adapted to you or vice versa so well? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, for us, you know, I grew up and we were, spent a lot of time at Phoenix uh, when I was growing up racing. And, and our cars just really from day one, we, we've always been somewhat successful on, on the flatter type racetracks uh, through the years. So Richmond has been probably our best racetrack on paper in, in both divisions and we've been fortunate to to win some races there and, and we look at that place as you know if, if we're having a bad start or having a you know a tough go at things when we go to Richmond you at least expect the top 10 out of the car and um, you know if you're if everything's running good you expect to be competitive in the top five uh, running up front so it's been a very good racetrack for us I think it's just kind of how I was brought up and um, you know we just adapted well right off the bat to those types of racetracks. Pat? Pat Patterson, PRN Series. Kevin, can you talk a little bit about how two cars can slow two cars in front of them down? I know in the nationwide car, there's, there's some instances where what you do behind them can actually perhaps pull a car back away from a two-car draft. Number one, does it work in nationwide? Will it work on Sunday in the cup cars? And how do you, have you learned more about slowing two cars down in front of you? Yes. Am I going to explain it to you? No. <laughs> Claire? <laughs> Claire B. Lang, Sirius NASCAR Radio. Just to follow up, and you said you have 20 people with the ability to chat with you on your nationwide car while you're in the car. I mean, if people can just even imagine trying to I am 20 people while you're on your computer, uh, and you're driving the race car that fast, how does the communication, h how are you hearing it? And that just seems impossible to me. Well, you know, it seems like that's kind of the trend in the garage, so I figured I'd try it over there before I try it on my cup car. So, um, you know, I think, you know, it seems like everybody has just gone that way. You know, my cup car is just still very simple. It's got my teammates in it, and that's it. So um, I'm still not comfortable with it, to tell you the truth, but I'm going to try it just because, just because, just to see if it works. So if it works on Saturday, then we'll, you know, we'll implement it on Sunday. Um, but we'll see. Well, unless you're on the right channel, you don't, you, don't, you can only communicate with one person at a time. So it's not like, it's not confusing by any means. It's the only confusing part is finding the channel. <laughs> okay, Kevin, thank you very much for coming in this morning. Good luck this weekend.